Hey, how are you doing everybody? It's Last Outrider again and you're probably wondering how did I possibly make two videos in one day after being gone this long and I will tell you because I was reminded that I owed people a video and answers to some questions and it's true and I have no excuse for not making the video long time ago other than I didn't want to so first the questions <clears throat> the questions people asked me was what do I play besides 40k the answer actually if you really think about it shouldn't be that surprising because all two other games that I spend a lot of time in are, are similar to 40k uh, one you can find me in Eve online playing Amar, not surprisingly, with, I'm there, <laughs> uh, flying a stealth bombers. So, so yes, that's definitely a lot of, uh, the other one is League of Legends. Playing a lot of League of Legends. What do I play? I, I, well, I'll let you guess. I'll give you a little guess. Pause the video and ask yourself, what character would I play in League of Legends? Did you pause it? Okay, well, I'm back. The answer is... Ramus. Yes, I play Ramus. Okay. <laughs> because it's just such a simple, elegant character, and it's just... Geez, I like Ramus, mostly because he doesn't have a lot of trailers and a lot of flash and a lot of backstory and he's just there kicking people's ass. That's why. So those are the two games I play other other than 40k. I'm probably going to be spending some time playing um, Inquisitor Martyr. I can tell you that. That looks pretty flippin' awesome. Uh, and starting tomorrow, Dawn of War 3, uh, I've been even thinking about doing a whole, you know, over-the-shoulder gaming video because it just came out to see what it's like. Um, because it, the, well, the trailers look cool, but you know, it's, I, we have no idea really. I, you've played the, I've seen the open beta, but we're going to see how it's going to be when it when it comes out so now the next part is the video that i was supposed to make and that was supposed to be a first view video made about seven months ago and if somebody asked me to make a first viewing video you know those where you watch the trailer of something as it happens which actually I did make and it was quite boring because I it was just me sitting there watching the trailer um, for Lord Inquisitor the Lord Inquisitor prologue so sparing you watching me watching the trailer doing not much other than watching the trailer I will tell you what I think Interestingly enough, I can have now a reference that I can make that I couldn't make then, and that is, have you seen the Ghost in the Shell movie? That's what the Lord Inquisitor trailer gave me the feeling of. It's visually an exact adaptation of what you would imagine 40k artwork would look like if it was rendered in high definition 3d uh, the characters have again the same look and feel as you would have imagined they would be but the real question is will the story be there now I'm not gonna give you any story spoilers about Ghost in the Shell but it had the look but the story was missing and to give you an example the inquisitor martyr trailer with that inquisitor that had the look and the feel i ascribed to 40k 
uh, Inquisitor Lord, like I said, it's too new to really make a critique. Uh, maybe I was hoping for something else to come out in the, in the last seven months, but nothing has. Uh, you know Aaron Dimsky Bowden is working on writing, so so there's some hope there. The, the, the thing, if I had to put all my worries into one concept, and I assume even that these people making this even know I exist and would care what my opinion is, faith. You're making a video with Grey Knights and the Inquisition. And if you throw in the Adepta Sororitas, Sisters of Battle, you've got the three most faithful characters in uh, groups in 40k together. And if you're going to do that, the thing you're going to have to get right is their faith. You can't play them off as secular characters. Faith in the Emperor truly and honestly protects in 40k. And if they get that wrong, if that Inquisitor Acolyte, I think he is, uh, uh, just comes off as kind of a jocular Arbite, more like it, really, more like he's more like, yeah, like a judge and an Arbite and, and law enforcement type of character than an Inquisitor, uh, they will have really missed the mark because the Inquisitors are out there doing holy work. Now, you know, obviously Inquisitors run the spectrum, They're so... But whether they're radicals or, or, or monodominants, purists, it doesn't matter. The one thing that ties them all together is their faith, the absolute faith in the emperor, in the imperium, in their belief in these things. Now, how they express that varies wildly. But you've got to pin that truly religious zealotry in the story, in the character. You have to see it in the Grey Knights, obviously. I mean, the only, they're incorruptible because of their faith. You're going to have to see it in the Inquisitors. You're going to have to see it in the Inquisitors' henchmen. You're going to have to see it in, I believe that was a Doth Cult Assassin. That's a religious sect. Killing in the name of the emperor, not just as a homicidal maniac, but as a truly uh, sanctified act. Um, and, a, and a lot of that is missing in much of the 40K uh stories and novels you, you see it pop up sometime that i believe that's one of the reasons why all the sisters of battles novels have kind of fallen on their face so far because people are really scared to approach this religious fanatical faith of of the 40k uh world and even with chaos, it's the same thing. If you really are going to portray chaos, you really are... These are a chaos cultists. It's a cult. They have to believe these chaos entities are their gods. They worship them, and they are granted power for that worship. They aren't just petty tyrants or idiots abusing power. They have to be truly religious fanatics, and you truly have to get a sense of that if you're going to create, in my opinion, if I had the rake make a 40k video or write a 40k story, or uh, I would really make that absolutely clear. Uh, you know, the Space Marines, 
started as as warrior monks. Uh, they've kind of lost that. They turned into super soldiers, uh, how many people portray them. Uh, they turned into, if you go by Abnet's interpretation, they're basically uh, Imperial guards in, in, in battle armor. Uh, so where did the warrior monk ethos come from? Where, if, where did the, where did the fact that they spend so much of their time in prayer and contemplation and chaplains walking around protecting the spirit of the, of the chapter? I think a lot of authors are scared to deal with that. And so it's, and that's why it's missing. But if this is really going to claim to be a movie for gamers by gamers and they want to make it authentic that's what you're going to have to put into it and i got that feeling in the inquisitor martyr video yeah i just i got that feeling there and i didn't get it in the lord inquisitor prologue video and which means nothing let me be clear, it means nothing because it's just the prologue and we have no idea what it is, and it's just an acolyte. I, I mean, now, if the Inquisitor Lord was up there dancing around like that, I would say, okay, I, I have an issue with that, but if it's an acolyte, whatever. And the, the death cultist didn't really say anything at all. So that's what I thought of it. And it's long overdue, seven months or so, so I'm sorry, here it is, that's my opinion. Maybe I'll see people in EVE. Hey, the fan fest is going on right now. This is actually one of the first ones that I'm not in Vegas with to, to see. Um, and I hope you enjoy that. And, uh, oh, one of my other questions. Yes, I forgot. With the Horus Heresy, what is my favorite Horus Heresy book? How many times have I been asked that one? Actually, probably only about three or four. But um, it's the Graham McNeil ones, uh, really. I, I think that those were the interesting ones, and and more specifically, some of the short stories. I, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the Nemesis, the one where where they had the assassins hunting down the execution squad. Uh, that was that was a good one. It tended to be the off ones like that. <clears throat> the other one where you had the, uh, the, shit, I forgot the name, of course, because I'm making a video, but where you had, you know, the Emperor's Children, the Word, World Eater, uh, <clears throat> and the one other, and they were, they, they escaped. The, the, the three loyalists, from traitor legions that then escaped and they bumped into the the lightning warriors the thunder warriors uh tyrannus the the lightning bearer who was trying to make who, who made the stable gene seed because they were they were like replicants and they were they were breed to die after like four years or so and the and the janissaries that was that was a good one as well those were the two books that i've enjoyed uh the most so far so that answers that question is there anything else I've missed over the last uh, a few months that I'm supposed to answer? If not, I'm sure people will yell at me. Um, and I hope you enjoy. I will, if I start reading, I might start with some of the short stories from there. Like the, uh, the Last Church, that was a good one. Where I believe the Emperor went and visited uh, the, the Last Church in person. That was one which book that was in. It was one of the anthologies, obviously. So until next time, I'll either see you here, or maybe I'll bump into people on Eve, or, or in League of Legends, if you can find me. Guess what my name is in Eve. Can you guess? Can you? I'll just tell you. It's Inquisitor! <sighs> yes, that means I've been there a very long time. My character is like over 10 years old, so... Yeah. Until next time. Bye. <sighs>